Hi everyone, Mike from the Excel Trainer here. Inserting an image into an Excel worksheet is nothing new. With a bit of a fudge, you could even make it appear as if the image was embedded in a cell. However, the new image function added to Excel this week now makes the process even simpler. And because the image is actually the cell contents, you can now use all your favorite formulas and functions to further manipulate it. Let me show you how. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo file from the link in the description below. Now, before I start, this is a brand new function. And as with many of the newest features in Excel, at the time of recording, it's only available to users on the Beta Insider channel. In addition, the image function only supports HTTPS you can't currently point to an image stored locally on your computer. Also, if the URL to the image file you're using is pointing to a site that requires authentication, the image won't load. I'll start by showing a basic example of the image function. I'm going to insert this picture of an ice cream taken from pixabay.com, one of the websites that I use for royalty-free photos. So I need to get the URL and copy that and then switch back to Excel. And in A1, I'll type equals image, open brackets. The source is the URL of the image and that needs to go in double quotes. So I'll paste that in, and then a comma. The alt text is alternative text that describes the image and is used for accessibility purposes. This is actually an optional parameter, but I'll put it in. And because it's text, it needs to go in double quotes and I'll put an ice cream. Then a comma. And then the third parameter, which is also optional, is the sizing. And you have four choices. Zero means fit the image in the cell and maintain the aspect ratio. One means fill the cell with the image and ignore the aspect ratio. Two is use the original image size. And three is customize the image size by using the height and width. And if you go for option three, you then have to set the height and width via two additional parameters. I'll go for option two here close the brackets and enter. And what it's done is it has used the original image size. So I will need to make the column wider and the row taller. If you hover over the image, you get this pop-up appearing just to the right of the image. Okay, let's look at a real life example of how this new function can be used. Here's a list of employees who work at Excellent Ice Cream, extracted from their HR system. Their photos are stored separately outside the HR system. For the purpose of this demo, I've uploaded some PNG images of people to a folder called Photos on the Excel Trainer website. I've also named the PNG files so they match the appropriate employee ID. I appreciate that this setup won't work for everyone. Not everyone has web space that they can upload files to. One option, of course, is to upload images to OneDrive or another cloud service. Because the setup is going to be different for different people, I'm not focusing too much on the setup and configuration of this page. A1 to H8 has been defined as a table called TBL employees. And using the image function, I'll populate column G with photos. I've already set the height and width of column G appropriately so that the photos won't be too big or too small. The image URL is coming from column F and the alternative text will be the employee name, which is coming from column D. And for the size, I want the image to fit the cell. So in G2, I'll put equals image, open brackets. Click on F2 and it picks up the column name because this is a table, comma, click on D2 and again it picks up the column name because this is a table, that's the alternative text, comma, and I'll use zero to fit it into the cell. Close brackets, 
and enter. Because column G is part of the table, the formula is copied down automatically. But what I will do is select all the cells in column G and change the horizontal alignment to centered. The formula in column H, by the way, is for a drop down validation list, and I'll show you that in a minute. It's combining the employee name, position, and ID. Over in the org chart sheet, this is where the company org chart will be constructed based on the data that I've just shown you. I've set the widths of the columns that contain the photos to 20, and I've set the heights of the rows that contain the photo to 75. Now, if you want to choose different sizes, that's entirely up to you. I've also put borders around the cells that will hold the photos and borders around the cells that contain the names and job functions or positions of each person. Again, you don't have to do that. I just thought it helped show where that information is going to go. To the right of each cell that will contain the photo is a data validation drop down. And the list has been generated from a dynamic array formula on the list sheet. The formula takes the data from the for validation column in the employees table and displays it alphabetically. Selecting an item from the list populates the cell to the left with the appropriate photo and fills in the name and job function or position in the cell below the photo. So how have I done that? Let me show you. It's done using the image function, but also an XLOOKUP. The XLOOKUP is picking up the employee ID from column G in this case, and that's the nine rightmost characters from that cell. It then looks up the employee ID in the employee ID column of the employees table and returns the corresponding value from the photo URL column. I added the if function around the entire formula because without it, when the cell with the drop down was blank, the cell with the image function displayed an NA. But what about the cell below the photo? That is using an X lookup again to pick up the employee ID from column G and it's picking up the name and the position from the main table. The CHAR10 is what's generating the line break, but also you need to make sure that wrap text is turned on for that cell. If it isn't, then even though CHAR10 is within that formula, which as I say is what's generating the line break, it gets ignored. So let's turn wrap text on. Again, the whole formula is wrapped up in an if function so that if the cell with the drop down is blank, the cell with the name and position remains blank rather than displaying an NA. Finally, to hide the name, position and employee number from column G, I'll set the text color of that cell to white so that it matches the color of the background. Now, what if someone new joins the team? Well, as long as their photo has been uploaded to the right folder and because the employees list is a table and because the source for the drop down is a dynamic array, I just need to add their details to the table. So I'll go down to A9 and I'll type TET-75424, which is the employee ID of this new person. I'll type in their details. Column D, by the way, contains a formula which just concatenates the first name and surname. The photo URL is also a formula and immediately the URL was generated. It pulls the appropriate photo into column G. As I said, as long as that photo already exists in the right folder, I'll just increase the height of row nine a little bit as well. And if I go over to the list sheet, you can see that Sally Jones has been added in there as well. So let's add Sally now to the org chart. Sally is going to be working at the same level as Penny. So I'll add her in column I. So go over to I2 and I will add thick outside borders around that cell. Do the same thing for I3. 
Then I'll select the formulas from column F. That's the two formulas that generate the photo and generate the name and position and copy those and paste them over into column I and then go to G2 and I need to copy that data validation. So I can click copy, go over to J2, click the drop down arrow under paste, select paste special, select validation and click OK. And also in J2, I need to set the background color to white. So I will do that. So now if I click the drop down arrow in J2, select Sally, it fills in her photo and it fills in her name and position. So that's the new image function. I wanted to come up with an example that was more than just a type a URL into a cell and refer to that cell. If you found this video useful, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments below. My free weekly newsletter is packed with tips to help you become more productive in Excel. And you can sign up to that at theexceltrainer.co.uk. But until the next time, have an excellent day.